Hey guys, Chris here from Neptune Music, and today we're gonna to talk about sample rate and bit depth. So you're opening up a new session in your DAW, and a pop-up window comes up asking you what sample rate you want and what bit depth you want. Well, what are you really deciding when you're choosing between the numbers that you have available to you? So when you're recording digitally, Analog audio signals must be translated to digital so it can be stored, read, and manipulated by the computer. This process, known as analog to digital conversion, is greatly affected by the sample rate and the bit depth. Put simply, bit depth is related to amplitude and sample rate is related to pitch. When recording music, these are the two fundamental things that we need to have represented in our recording for it to sound musical. So let's start with sample rate. The most common sample rates you're gonna run into are 44.1 and 48K. Although higher for sample rates such as 88.2, 96, and 192K are also options on some DAWs. But what exactly do those mean? So a sample is a digital snapshot of the signal at a point in time. When many of these samples are taken and played back in succession, they approximate the original signal, much like frames in a film. Sample rate is the frequency with which these snapshots are taken. So now we need to look at the Nyquist theorem. In order to produce an accurate representation of a given frequency of sound, each cycle of the sound's vibration must be sampled a minimum of two times. Humans can hear somewhere from around 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So in order to accurately capture this in digital recordings, the minimum sample rate must be at least 40,000 hertz. Frequencies above the human hearing spectrum that we can't actually perceive as sound still have an effect on the sounds that we do hear. So some claim it's important to sample high enough to capture all of those sounds that are affecting what we actually are hearing. The trade-off here is how big the file size is gonna be. The larger the sample rate, the more samples that are being taken, and therefore the larger file size. So let's move on to bit depth. The useful dynamic range of speech and music is from about 40 decibels to 105 decibels. Therefore, an analog to digital converter must be able to accurately represent differences in amplitude of at least 65 dB. Through a process known as quantization, each sample is assigned to the closest available amplitude value. Binary digits called bits are used to quantify each sample that is taken. The common bit depths are 16 and 24 bits. A 16-bit digital word could accommodate a dynamic range of 96 dB. A 24-bit digital word has a dynamic range of 144 dB. Once again, the trade-off is file size. A bigger bit depth means a bigger file. It's also important to note here that you're never going to get a perfect representation of the analog signal that you recorded. Digital audio is samples. And if you zoom in on a waveform far enough down to the sample level, you'll see steps. This is each single sample that has been collected. Now the higher the sample rate, the closer together they are, so it approximates the signal better, but it will never be perfect. My preferred recording method is 48K24. I feel like it has the best balance of things while keeping the file size at a reasonable level. It's not that much more than 44.1, so the file size isn't that much bigger, but you can get that much closer to what the actual waveform is. It's a better representation. I like to use 24 bits because that is a huge amount of extra dynamic range for not that much more of a file size. When I'm recording in stereo at 48.24, every minute is 17 megabytes. This can stack up fast, but I still feel it's a small price to pay for good quality audio. But then again, if you're trying to record at 192.24, your file sizes are going to start to get ridiculously large. It's important also to note here that the CD standard is 44116, which means it's 44,000 kilohertz and 16 bits. So some say that it's not even worth recording at higher sample rate or bit thefts because it's just going to be converted into this format later on. I personally believe that recording at these higher levels though still has an effect even after it's converted down. You need to be the ultimate judge on what sample rate and bit depth you need to use for any given situation that you're in. For me, I just like knowing that my waveforms are a little bit closer to the actual thing. Even though I convert everything back down to 44116 in the end, I still think it sounds better. I hope you found this video useful. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try and answer it. Be sure to check out my channel for more audio videos and how-tos, and thanks for watching.